and we are live. <sighs> well, here we are in, uh, no one in yet, but <laughs> well, never mind. <laughs> Always the same. Like I said, I should start announcing these better or more in advance of when, <laughs> of when these are going to be. <sighs> A nice, ooh, a bit chilly to be honest, considering what we've had this week. Very chilly. Put my shorts on this morning. I tell you what, mistake. Mistakes were made. <laughs> we've got a cow watching us now. Heard of them. Don't know if you can see them, are they here? Oh. Uh, we've got some people joining us now. Oh, five of you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're just uh, kicking off. <laughs> and as usual for a British stream, uh, we're talking about the weather. <laughs> Can always, always tell when it's... Uh, uh, <laughs> someone from uh, from the UK doing a live stream because they always start off with the weather <laughs> oh someone from Thailand joining us today good morning to you or is it evening uh, evening is where you will be welcome to uh, to joining us oh some more people here morning 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 oh someone from the Netherlands there joining us as well I love that. <laughs> to be honest, I never expected to have such an international, <laughs> an international audience watching us. Um, when I've had a look at my um, my analytics, we've got a lot of people, uh, surprisingly, from Germany watching me. Uh, most of them are are from are from Europe, and of course, we do get a lot of people from the UK watching us as well. But yeah, always always nice. Oh, morning there someone else oh didn't see that there yes morning 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 good morning good morning uh, how have you all been had a good week I'll tell you what it's been absolutely absolutely boiling a couple of days ago to a point where uh, my computer was overheating uh, so I'm having to take it in on Monday uh, just to get checked out not only that but uh, before when uh, the coronavirus all struck and everything happened my uh, my sound port on the back of my uh, pc went uh so it's it hasn't affected me using my computer but it's <laughs> it took out my speakers originally so i had to order a new set of speakers uh which is really strange but take it in finally to get it, uh, to get it looked at after <laughs> after a couple of months of it actually happening <laughs> ah Right, oh. oh, come on, let's get the comments up. Oh, I know I am surprised uh, many people, many Dutch people do watch my videos. Oh, morning from somewhere else there as well. Morning back to you. Hope you're all enjoying yourselves. Oh, we've got 10 people in and no likes. Oh, shameful. So, as always, do remember to uh, like the stream. It does help out... Uh, the channel massively and uh, of course this morning uh, our first uh, topic of the day uh, no horses following me today but you never know <laughs> you never know uh, what might happen on these streams we uh, saw a group of cows uh, this morning as we passed sometimes they can cause even bigger problems than horses <laughs> We might encounter some on the uh, path today. Um, like I say, on the weekends I do a bit of a I do a bit of a longer walk than I normally do uh, normally. And uh, we've had a couple of days, a uh, couple of horses on the on the path here. And I don't know if you can see, but it's quite quite a narrow path. If you can see in the background, so imagine like a horse on here. It's literally like a traffic jam in the morning. <laughs> But yes, topics. First topic of today. Um, 
I'm sorry to all my uh, my French viewers, but um, I'm sharpening up my uh, my longbow skills. Um, you know, getting my sword, getting my brigantine ready, because I don't know if you've heard, the Hundred Years' War is back on. <laughs> yes, uh, a Tory MP. Oh, I can't remember what his name was now, but a Tory MP stood up in Parliament and announced that Britain should retake Calais. Yes. <laughs> Of all of all the things to stand up in Parliament and say, let's retake Calais among among the numerous things uh, I, I'd never thought I'd hear said here to, to say in Parliament would be, yeah, let's take back Calais because, you know, that's a wonderful idea. <laughs> let's, uh, you know, re-kick off the Hundred Years' War. You know, we'll, we'll reinvade uh, you know Normandy like they did in the past and we'll uh, you know we'll gather up our, our troops we'll empty the prisons as well which I'm sure the conservatives will be uh, in in massive favor of because that's what uh, <laughs> that's what Henry also did when he uh, when he invaded he emptied all the prisons and conscripted a load of uh, <laughs> of, of prisoners into his into his army um, so I'm sure the Conservatives will be in favour of that because, you know, it'll empty the prisons and uh, de you know, decrease the uh, the prison population. So I'm sure the Conservatives will be happy with that. But it, it's just unbelievable that we've got to this stage where uh, an MP, a, a Tory one of all that, has, has stood up and said, yeah, we're going to retake... Uh, we're going to retake Calais. What? On earth? I I I thought this would this had to have been um, when I first saw it. I thought it was a news thump article. Like the first time I saw it, I was like, "This has to be a news thump article." And I didn't even I didn't even bother to check it until I saw a couple of other <laughs> links uh, for the exact same story come in. And there you had it. You actually had, um, <laughs> you know, a Tory MP standing up and advocating retaking Calais. And it's pretty much, um, you know, <laughs> bizarre. But there you have it. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe it. How, why on earth would we want to take Calais? Doesn't make any sense at all but there you go that's the uh, that's the bizarre mindset we're in but yeah um i i remember uh, tomorrow tomorrow guys uh, get down to your local parish because i'm sure um longbow practice will be reinstated as well and, <laughs> and we'll all be uh, We'll all be celebrating St. Crispin's Day, of course, again. Uh, you know, victory at Agincourt and Cressay and, you know. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, uh, fa fantastic. Oh. But you, you, I, I just generally don't know what was going on. But... If you saw um, this week as well, we also posted the um, the video of those two historians talking about like an, his an historical view of Brexit and how it should be represented. And one of them, you know, spot on, was completely right. Um, ah, I say I'm terrible with names. Remember faces, but I always forget names. And see him now, slightly balding hair, glasses. Had a blue suit on, with a bit of a uh, blue tie. The other one had a red tie. <laughs> but that's where, uh, that's where that's where we got to. It was uh, unbelievable. And I agree with what the historian guy said in that video. Of uh, you know, there is this element of nostalgia about 
Brexit and we've talked about it at length before on this channel and I remember the very first video I ever made uh, on this subject was um, you know Brexiteers want to bring uh, want to introduce Empire 2.0 that video was called and it was one of the very first um, big videos I ever made um, about Brexit back in back in the day it was one of the first uh, videos that got a lot of um, attention. Now it wasn't a lot back then, uh, you know, it was only about, you know, 2,000 views, which in YouTube terms is is nothing. But uh, that's, you know, to me that quite a lot and I had a lot of um, attention, a lot of comments, a lot of people saying, oh that's not, that's not what they mean, they'll never, they'll never do it. Um, yeah, absolutely insane. Oh, what was that? Someone about horses there. Oh, hang on, I missed it. You managed to negotiate. They weren't there this morning, uh, Planetary Citizen. They weren't there. However, uh, I have been negotiating my way around horses on this path uh, for the past uh, past week. But I'm surprised they're not here this morning, to be honest. And like I say, when you get horses on on this path, you know, as you, as you can see, a horse or even just a, like a small herd of them. Uh, it's very hard to get past them. <laughs> but yeah, the the whole concept of of Empire 2.0 is is insane. It really, really is. But that was what they, you know, what they wanted. And you've only got to really look back at uh, at where they are. In fact, here they are. In the background there. So they're not on the side today. <laughs> so. That's where. That's what gets so insane and crazy. What you heard of Brexiteer. What was that? Brexiteer saying that Eurotunnel should be closed. And Britain made an island once again. Um, uh, uh, well, that would be, again, it would be incredibly a dumb idea to do, to be honest. Uh, but again, it's a, it's a typical, you know, Brexiteer. The Eurotunnel actually uh, benefits us massively financially. Um, I don't know if you've ever remember taking a ferry, how long it takes on a ferry versus the Eurotunnel. If you've ever been there, it's literally about 30 to 40 minutes and you're in France. Versus, what, is it two hour crossing, two, three hour crossing sometimes, depending on weather? You know, <laughs> if you've got, um, you know, this all comes back to the just-in-time uh, system again, that a lot of our manufacturing has, has come to rely on. And even now, you've got a lot of, you know, factories and plants that have just been going, we don't know what's uh, what's going to go on so they've been um, <laughs> you know they've been pretty much up in the air as to we don't know what the hell we're going to do I can't blame them I really can't blame them It's but that's where we are this is the, the bizarre situation we're in I mean it's, it was very interesting listening to the, again, those two historians and them talk about how the Conservative Party was the party of, of British business and that how over time they've become really um, beholden to a very, very small uh, party of, uh, of uh, very large donors and, you know, non-British interests as well. But, you know, this is, this is why I worry about us becoming uh, an oligarchy. I do worry about that quite a lot. You know, I don't want this to be a, a place where, you know, as so long as you've got the, the money, you can get away with anything. I don't think that's, that's not the type of society, you know, that I want to live in. You know, I think we should be working towards a more, you know, fairer, egalitarian society, regardless of uh, of what it is.
Also, the other thing that was... <laughs> the other interesting thing that was brought up was we very often have, throughout all this time, was... Um, you've had numerous, shall we say, ex-colonials. <laughs> um, so, people from, like, New Zealand, Australia, Canada... Um, you name them they were always always like yeah you're gonna do uh this this brexit uh thing uh we don't understand why you're doing it but uh you know don't expect good trade deals from us Ooh, ah, again oh every time <laughs> um yeah oh, good morning you know, don't expect, you know, good trade deals from us. And we've had that pretty much reinforced today. Um, the Deputy Prime Minister of New Zealand has said that... Uh, oh, oh, morning. morning. Yeah, we've got the Deputy Prime Minister of... Uh, of New Zealand coming out and saying that, uh, you know, Britain is not fit for a, for a deal with New Zealand. <laughs> you know? And that's not, you know, that's not the first time this is, this has happened. This is like, you know, I can think of multiple quotes, you know, there was the Indian trade executive guy who said, uh, you know, India is not going to become an imperial bazaar for you post Brexit. But there we are once again. Just yet more insane comments from these, uh, you know, insane comments from Brexiteers mixed with sensible comments from, you know, trade experts and delegations from around the world who've all said, well, that's fine if you, if you want to go for Brexit, but, you know, we don't know what you're expecting from us. And this is where the, uh, oh, the whole rhetoric of, of global Britain doesn't make any sense. Oh. That's all right, come on through. Oh. Morning. But you get this. Oh, oh. <laughs> It gave me a shock then, just bounding around the corner. That dog gave me a fright then, just bounding around the corner. It's like, whoop. <laughs> oh, morning. Everyone's out with the dogs today. <laughs> but yeah, the uh, the rhetoric of um, global Britain. When you think about it, if, if if you can, you know, if if you're British and you remove yourself from the uh, from the idea of saying, you know, you want to be a, a global trading nation you know we want to be global britain really when you think about it if, if you're if you think this from a perspective of like another country not a lot of it makes a big deal of sense you know, what does it actually mean what does there's no policies attached to it so you can't really say um what it is i mean go get trade deals well Okay, but what are you expecting from from these trade deals? Uh, you know, they want them to be quote better than uh, than the ones we have the EU because the Brexiteers are desperate in any way, shape, or form to um, you know declare Brexit a success. But you know, I've, I've said it before. Um, it dies, you know, tomorrow. On the other first of oh, more dogs. Oh. 
Oh. <laughs> Morning. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I think everyone's decided to take their uh, take the dog for a walk this morning. <laughs> Oh, but a nice little, uh, nice little basset hound. That don't know if you could, uh, don't know if you saw it in the the frame, but a really tiny basset dog. I think if I ever had one, I think I'd call it Biggles. <laughs> but this is where we, you know, if you think of this from the perspective of like a, like you know, Thailand, Japan, or anything like that, and they go. Oh, morning. morning. All right. <laughs> More dog walkers and the dogs. <laughs> I think we've chosen the good time uh, today. <laughs> I should have I should have called the uh, called the stream morning walk with uh, <laughs> morning walk with surprise guest uh, guest dog appearances. <laughs> we've had quite a number of breeds today, although I haven't shown them to be honest on stream, but. I've had quite a number of, of different ones. <laughs> like I say, these are uh, these streams, you know, random things happen. <laughs> uh. Uh. There we go. So it's an odd yeah, morning walk with random dogging. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it means that uh, I haven't read the weather correctly. So I think if lots of people are out dog walking, I think it means it's going to rain later. <laughs> so I think they're all getting in their, uh, their dog walking now. Morning. <laughs> but there you go. So, oh yeah, why does the UK do its trade deals in secret? Because it doesn't want anyone to know. <laughs> it's like uh, the Japan deal recently. Um, lots of fun and games with that this week. Um, <laughs> we don't actually know what is um, going to be in the deal because, as is normal, a lot of a lot of of countries, except the EU. When it comes down to like negotiating trade deals are very very private at what goes in to those deals and what's actually being talked about so you've got a very very secretive um you know behind closed doors level talks and we'll never know what's in those deals until it's signed on the dotted line but if you're a european or the EU right now, you're probably like, in Europe, um, because of the, the EU, and the EU is negotiating on behalf of 27 different countries, they have to be open. They have to be open and go, yeah, we know uh, this is what we're discussing today. This is what was, this is what was said, because they are, you know, as I said, negotiating on behalf 27 different countries or what used to be 28 with us so they had to be open about it and what was going on and this infuriated a lot of countries especially the US especially the US the US hates um, when stuff gets leaked from its trade talks because very often um, if you've been aware I, I looked into this and apparently in the last last uh, couple of years or so a lot of uh u.s trade dot trade trade talks have been forced to stop because the u.s wants to put in like secret courts where they can um you know a u.s corporation can come in and say um we don't like what we're what you're doing to our um you know that new regulation so we're going to sue you for loss of um profits and you know that's the, that's the type type of stuff the U.S. has been uh, has been getting up to and, and doing in its trade deals, which has worried a lot of of various different countries. 
But, you know. And now we're, we're not going to be able to know. Again, the obviously last week, the big talk about uh, uh, about trade deals with obviously Japan as the example. They were bigging it up, saying, oh, how wonderful this trade deal is going to be. But no one, no one, not on either side, was actually saying what was in the deal. Because that's how trade deals are normally negotiated in like secret behind closed doors. So we won't know um, what's in that deal, what it is actually going to be like until the dotted line has been signed. And as we said this week, it's only going to be uh, 0.07% to our GDP. And in, you know, GDP in global terms, that's nothing. You know, we've lost 20% of our, of our GDP um, recently. So, you know, what are you going to do? Oh, morning. So we're in a, a wonderful situation of when we are now officially in a, uh, you know, a, you know, a recession. And we're trying to deal, do deals with, with countries. And another thing that's very much worth bearing in, and a lot of people are starting to zero in on, is um, all these other countries and their economies are actually doing quite well and better than ours. And no one has yet to say, oh, the reason why our economy is doing so bad is because of Brexit. <laughs> but I think they're slowly starting to get there. A lot of the, you know, a lot of the newspaper journalists are trying to stay away from saying that fact because you've got to you've got to factor in in brexit when you're making these um you know economical um forecasts and decisions and brexit will have played a massive part in what's been in this uh, economic downturn compared when you compare us to other countries and then you've got to compare of well if that's what's happening now what is it actually going to be like when we're out side what what does that mean for us and very often the you know the reply is it ain't going to be as good as we used to be and you know brexiteers always say oh you, you you're, you're forecasting uh, doom and gloom um you know it's not going to be like that it's uh, going to be different it's going to be different going to be you know it's all going to be you know, fantastic but you know you try and have these conversations, even in you know the House of Parliament, where they try to have these conversations in, and you had the Brexiteers MPs stand up and say, "You don't believe in in Britain enough." Well, belief means nothing, you know. When you're talking about trade, it's all about, you know, it's very simple, a math. You know, it's a mathematical equation, like it. Not, but there you go. <laughs> We've had, you know, the, the trade talks with Japan, you know, which was funny, again, because, you know, you had Liz, Liz Trust try and... Um, the deal stalled because Liz Trust tried to put Stilton into the deal because, from what, we, from what we've heard, she wanted to sell it as a, oh, look, we got Stilton into our, um, our, our trade deal. How wonderful our deal is compared to the EU's. So come on, we've got 50 people now and only 18 likes. <laughs> uh, do, you know, please do remember to like the stream. It does uh, help out massively and gets more people in. You know, can have some more conversations with people. So, you know, hit that like button. That's it. Now we're up to 21. So come on, keep on hitting it. I know you. I know. Uh, I know you like it. <laughs> hit that like button. But yeah, you had Liz Truss. Bizarrely, um, and here, here's the thing: I don't mind. I don't mind Liz Truss being an advocate for um, British cheese. I really don't mind that at all. Um, you know, it's part of an MP's job to um, to promote British businesses, local businesses in the area. You know, that's part of a, a job description. So I don't mind her bigging up. You know, British cheese. You know. Well done, Liz Truss. It's part of your job. The, the area where it gets stupid is that these talks with Japan stalled specifically because of her wanting to put Stilton, uh, and it was then that was it. Stilton, exactly named, 
because she wants it. Um, and again, all the Brexiteers are desperate when these trade deals come out. Of course, when they do come out, um, these deals are going to be picked over like a fine tooth comb. And, you know, that's when we'll know the truth. Um, how good these deals actually are compared to uh, compared to the EU. And that's when we'll start to see um, that, you know, the lies just weren't, didn't stand up to reality of, you know, these, uh, these deals were meant to be, you know, amazing. Leaving the EU was meant to be amazing. And all this, um, you know, typical jargon that they, they, they pumped out for, for almost three to four years, some of them even longer. And, you know, but that's, that's the insane thing that they made, that Liz Truss made such a demand. But that goes once again to show you, to reinforce the whole Empire 2.0 of it was and always was this massive, um, you know, block on a lot of people's minds to actually reject what the world is like now, what, you know, modern capitalism is like now and how the world works. And Brexiteers just seem to be completely oblivious to the fact that the world has moved on. But then they're stuck in this this mindset. It's, it, it boggles. It boggles the mind, but they have. Yeah, you can't beat English cheese. <laughs> Although I have to say I am quite a brie fan. I do like a bit of brie. So I suppose I'm a, I'm a traitor to English cheese saying that I like my brie. <laughs> I'll take the Pepsi challenge any day. <laughs> oh yeah, that was the uh, other thing that... Uh, Yeah, you have to believe in Brexit. Who is that? We'll just read that. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. You've got a you've got an, oh, a weird name. Uh, Kist, Kisten, Kisten Coles. I hope that's how you say it. <laughs> um, yeah, you need to believe in Brexit. That's uh, that's all the plan. How is it supposed to work? Exactly. Um, this this entire thing of you know you've got to believe in Brexit doesn't work it's it's just another empty slogan that they've that they've pumped out again for years and you're like yo what, what what does it what does it mean but oh we've got some horses joining us <laughs> but yeah you, you are uh, you are right, this this idea of you can just quote, believe in Brexit and somehow, somehow it'll 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 work. It, you know, politics doesn't work that way. Yeah, you can believe in your country, but at the end of the day, what do you actually want? You know? And beliefs and beliefs themselves are quite dangerous. And then uh, there's someone else who uh, said a good comment there. Yeah, nobody talks about Gibraltar, Northern Ireland Agreement, Falkland Islands. Well, we've had a lot of talk about, um, you know, the Northern Ireland Agreement. They've been given, uh, you know, it was very funny at the start of the 2016 referendum where, like, the DUP were planning, like, street parties for Brexit. And, you know, it was going to be wonderful. They were going to be liberated from uh, the EU as well. And yet, look... They got absolutely thrown under the bus. <laughs> and there's now, um, thanks to Boris Johnson, there is now a border between Northern Ireland and uh, the UK. There is now a sea border there. You know, something that, again, the Brexiteers said, there shouldn't be, there shouldn't happen. And that's why, um, you know, the British government agreed to the backstop. The backstop, which was such a sticking point for so many Brexiteers, was an, as an idea invented by the Brexiteers to try and solve the Northern Ireland problem. So, 
<laughs> you know, Brexit is, you know, denying reality and then proposing ideas to solutions and then actually just saying, oh no, we don't like that now. <laughs> you know, it would be funny if I didn't live in this country. <laughs> You know, it would be funny if this is not going to have a serious, um, you know, an economic consequence, but it will. And a lot of people were sold, I keep on saying this multiple times on this channel, you know, Brexit was sold uh, to many people and the idea that it would make their lives better. In no way is Brexit going to make these people's lives better. And I have always, I always say this and advocate on this channel always remember there is a difference between a brexiteer and that is someone like boris johnson nigel farage michael gove you name them they're the they're the brexiteers and then the brexit supporters which are you know would be people like you know you and me the average you know man on the street who you know supports brexit they were lied to and conned to and as much as, you know, fun as we have on this channel sometimes, just, you know, laughing at, you know, <laughs> these these people, because, you know, we told them so. You know, someone came to me and said, I should get a, I should get a T-shirt printed um, with I told you so. <laughs> I actually have, I actually had, uh, have, uh, have looked into it. <laughs> I found, I found T-shirt designs with I told you so said on it, but... Uh, <laughs> It'll be uh, be good to get going that way. So yeah, it's absolutely insane. But oh, what? We'll have a, a nip down river. Nip down to river. This is always a nice spot. Ah. Oh. Ah. Here we are down by the river. <laughs> Always quite a nice spot. You now, give my arm a break <laughs> for holding you up so for so long. <laughs> I must I must definitely get a a steady cam or something. Oof. But yeah, it's it's good exercise. <laughs> oh. But we've had this um We've had this for a while now, for the exact same, you know, while. Um, you know that, you know, it's, it's what can you, you know, what can you do about it? Um, you know, there's there's so much things that you know you when you actually talk, um, you actually talk to people and these these brexiteers, a lot of the time. Um, you get, ooh, it must be, um, you know, it puts people in, you know, all these situations of where they're like, we wanted, um, Brexit for X, Y, and Z, Z, you know, X, Y, and Z reasons. And you're like... What what can you what can you do? Um, you know, a lot of these people when you get down to it, like immigration. Immigration doesn't actually affect people's jobs, but the fear. I mean, you see this all the time. Of you know, and it was it's been you know forecast this week. We had a dinghy land on 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 the shores, and it's just like you know. That's that's it. It's, it's unbelievable. <laughs> Someone hung nearby. No, um, those are actually uh, actually swings <laughs> for people to to swing on there. You can actually swim um, in this this uh, this little river. Apparently, um, I'm not going to have a dip this morning myself. <laughs> but um, but there you have it, and you have all this, you know this fear and whipped up by people like Nigel Farage, 
for a very specific reason of he wants you to be against um you know immigrants because otherwise if you're not against immigrants then you might realize that actually it's the tory party that are your main problem and the policies that they've specifically introduced to this country and if you were to ignore you know if you were to ignore immigrants well then maybe maybe um you know that, that might be the the problem you can't see the troll but i put him in timeout by the way <laughs> as soon as as soon as i saw him i put him in timeout so yeah i, I have very little patience for trolls <laughs> So, you've got, um, you know, that's, that, that's where we are. And it's, it's not, you know, it comes down to the, you know, economic arguments as well of, oh, um, we'll be fine. But a lot of these people, especially um, older people, when they lived back before uh, we joined, like, the uh, European, oh, the European common market, they remember that time of where Britain was, was, it was, it was okay, but not really. Um, you know, there was a reason why we were called the sick man of Europe and, you know, the basket case, um, you know, we were known as the complete basket case, um, funny enough. <laughs> um, you know, these were British businesses. Most of them were nationalized. Um, and you know, they had jobs. They were, they were, they were fine. And, the they seem to think that we can go back to that somehow but don't realize once again you can't go back to that you know 1970s britain it's it's gone the world has changed and moved on and so has britain and us joining the european union has increased our economy and the way that we you know have access to to spending money to spend on things like infrastructure and stuff like that has increased specifically because we were in the eu and a lot of a lot of people cannot cannot seem to 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 get around that in fact you should just ban the brexiteers no i i live in hope that you can actually reach through to these people now you're not going to be able to reach them all you're not going to be able to reach 100 percent of of these brexiteers this is why i say you have to make a distinction between someone who is a Brexiteer and someone who is a Brexit supporter. Because I do truly believe that you can actually reach um, some of these people. And even if, you know, you reach out to these people and, and talk to them in, you know, in good faith, you know, don't hammer them straight away. Talk to them in good faith. Because if you can reach about 10% and turn someone who, who who voted to leave because as i've said before people voted to leave for multiple reasons and that's where we get to um you know people because people vote to leave for multiple reasons i've talked to people in barnsley who were um you know i want to um leave the european union politically but i want to stay in the single market and customs union well all of a sudden they're not getting what they voted for because the leave campaign ran ran on that fact that was one of their promises of we could stay in the single market and customs union but you know they don't it's 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 insane but you've got to try and actually reach these people make them realize that you know one thing we will, I will always continue to say on this on this channel consistently was the European Union was never ever a problem to this country. The problems of this country were never caused by the EU. The problems to this country were caused by the Tory party and more specifically over 10 years of Tory austerity. That's what caused the problems in this country that's who is to blame for a lot of people who voted for brexit you know they were they were conned and say oh yeah we feel left behind 
it has been ultimately not cities but the towns that voted for it and there you go uh, oh, Paul Armstrong in the comments so oh, hello Paul do you remember the days when you used to support me because I was uh, speaking out against uh, like um, oh conspiracy theories and things like that and then the second I started supporting Brexit you you became really salty against me and you changed your position on me the fact that I can go back and find like loads of positive comments from you <laughs> back in the day <laughs> you know dude I'm not the one that's salty about Brexit you are I talk about Brexit because it's going to create numerous problems Brexit is not going to go away. The EU is not going to go anywhere, despite how many doomsayers you've had said over the past five years, again and again and again, this has been said. You will, uh, were saying a couple of weeks ago that, um, you know, that the EU was going to go bankrupt and that they, won't go, that they weren't going to reach a, uh, a financial agreement. For the EU. Well, guess what? They did reach a financial agreement. I, I, I thought you said that wasn't going to happen. You see, don't feel, you know, you know, you can call him names, but that's not what's going to reach him. What's going to reach Paul is... Paul, I've said on this channel multiple times when I've gone through my articles, gone through my arguments, gone through my... Um, you know, statistics of all this stuff. You know, I've just been reading out the facts and I'm sorry, but sometimes you can't change facts. And if the facts say that you, the UK remaining in the European Union is a good thing, You know, then you're not following facts. You're you're following a, a belief system that, you know, doesn't make any sense. And I do hope one day, Paul, um, you will realise, much like everyone else, you know, you've been you've been conned. Um, by by the Brexiteers. I I really do hope one day you you realise that. And I hope that one day, Paul, when we do have the referendum to rejoin the European Union, um, you will be voting yes to rejoin. I, I believe that in my heart, Paul. I do truly believe one day you will have a change of mind about the EU. And I don't think that will happen to you until you actually start to feel... Um, some of the physical effects because a lot of Brexiteers are saying oh god oh it's going to be wonderful when we leave the EU no nothing's going to get better when we leave you know the EU and I'm you know I'm sorry Paul but a lot of our all the predictions from all the experts have all pretty much said the same thing Britain will just rejoin the EU you know it's just a matter of time that's what will happen. So anyway, I'm going to do a going to do a bit of shilling now as we uh, as we move on from uh, from Paul. Like I say, don't berate him too much, guys. Um, you know, as I always say, the distinction between the Brexit, the Brexiteer, and the Brexiteer supporter. Um, they are two different kettles of fish. So. Uh, thank you for, you know, we're not ending the stream, but you know, thank you for watching the stream. Thank you for everyone who's, who's joining us. I can't believe we've got over 70 people um, watching the stream at the moment, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, please do hit that like button as well. We've only got 31 likes uh, and only about 70 people watching at the moment. So please do hit that like button. It does help out uh, the channel massively. Um, if you are new to the channel, uh, please do hit that subscribe button to subscribe to the channel. Uh, we talk a lot about uh, politics on uh, on this channel. Uh, sometimes we'll have, we'll have a, a random stream where I will just talk about Warhammer 40k because, you know, can't talk about politics all the time, but there you go. <laughs> and uh, if you would like to support the channel um, in another way, uh, there is um, 
links down below to my Patreon where you can support me like that. Or there is a one-off um, donation, uh, donation uh, link called Buy Me Coffee where you can just drop me a, a one-off donation uh, like that. So, thank you, uh, thank you all for, for joining the stream today. It's been absolutely fantastic. We will continue on on this walk. We are far from, far from, uh, far from done. But, uh, we soldier on. We do indeed soldier on. And I want to talk about what is, is, is becoming a more and more Brexiteer talking point. And that is chucking the withdrawal agreement. And I have to say, when you look back at, um, at all this mess, with the benefit of hindsight, you can actually see this happening. Um, you know, this goes all the way back to um, David Davis, who, when he was the, um, you know, the negotiator for, uh, for leaving, for the department of, of exiting the European Union, um, you know, he went out and said, specifically, uh, he didn't like what uh, Theresa May had, had, had put forward. Um, because these were, these were sensible Tories at the time. Um, you know, they recognised the fact that the European Union was going to do damage to, uh, to the UK. So they went, okay, what we'll do is we'll do damage, as much damage limitation as we can possibly do. And of course, uh, the Brexiteers didn't like that. Didn't like that one bit. Um, and David Davis even came out and said that uh, we can renegotiate the withdrawal agreement. <laughs> you know that, that, and that was, and the EU was very, very specific even before that. That you know, once you sign up to um, the withdrawal agreement, you can't. It's not up for renegotiation. So this whole thing of this big push to um, ditch the withdrawal agreement is, is hardly uh, surprising. But once again, it's, it's funny when you look at it that uh, these people wind back the clock just a couple of months ago were the ones saying that we should be voting for it because it's, uh, it's fantastic. It's Boris's oven ready deal. You know, it's going to be uh, it's going to be fantastic. You know, it's going to be wonderful. But there you are. It's um, that's what that's what happens. And you, you, you just just stood there, and you're like, Ian Duncan Smith stood up in Parliament and openly said that you know <laughs> uh, he wanted the withdrawal agreement, and that um, you know it shouldn't be. He actually advocated that it shouldn't be scrutinised. <laughs> you know. It's it's unbelievable, unbelievable. But it's completely insane, completely. But there you go. And now they want to ditch the withdrawal agreement. And this is I, I want to I want to remind people about this. This isn't just a you know a, a simple agreement. This is an international treaty that the UK has signed up uh, to do. You know, if, if we throw away the withdrawal agreement, and now Boris is... Ex ex ironically, Boris soon is going to be the exact same position as uh, Theresa May was um, only, you know, last year. Or if he's going to be walking this really tight tightrope in the fact that a lot of um, of people would just, uh, you know, <laughs> he's going to try and please the Brexiteers. He's going to try and please the other people, but you know, neither neither side is going to be uh, appeased on this, and especially what we dub the Brexit ultras, who are obsessed with uh, trying to get the quote perfect perfect brexit but you know it's never going to be enough for them it's never going to be enough and I, i've said this to people before you've got to look back 
at the historic um, event that happened in the UK called the March of Grace. The March of Grace was a big historic event of uh, people in the north back during the dissolution of the monasteries and Henry VIII. They didn't want their monasteries um, taken away. It was a big part of uh, the monasteries were a big part of medieval life and they didn't want to lose them. So they, they, they actually protested of all of all things. You know, it, you don't hear that happening too much in uh, in medieval times, but they did protest. And the first one did actually succeed. They got the king to look at how they could um, maybe transition the monasteries and keep the monasteries in some way, shape or form. Maybe even transition over the, um, the brotherhoods to a more Protestant faith. But the problem was, was then the fanatics took over and it became more about um, forcing Henry VIII um, back in to uh, the Roman Catholic Church. And of course, Henry VIII didn't like that because uh, he wanted a divorce. And so, uh, you know, well, all the leaders lost their heads. Even the original guy, I can't remember his, I can't remember his name now, oh, I'm so bad with names. Um, the original guy who was actually started the March for Grace, he was a bishop, um, and, you know, and won that first march and was like, yes, this is fantastic, this is everything that we wanted, was actually dead set against... Um, you know, the further marches and was against the fanatics. But even he, because of the fanatics, ended up losing his head. And I wonder if, um, you know, Boris Johnson is that, uh, is that bishop. You know, <laughs> he's, uh, he's taken over, he's had his, had his march, had his wonderful, you know, time. I said that sooner or later Boris's honeymoon period would end. And I think we are seeing the end of that honeymoon period, especially the start of next year. And I have said there are departure dates of which Boris would go. Of He's got his Christmas departure date, maybe a couple of months after of that. Uh, maybe like March, April time. And then there's, of course, the third one where he somehow manages to survive sort of his full term. But I'd very, 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 very much doubt that the Tories would let him run at the next general election. Very much doubt that. Of course, one of the biggest tests would obviously be um, local elections, but obviously they got uh, postponed this year because of uh, COVID-19. Um, they're happening now um, next year. So we'll just have to wait and see what those, uh, what those results are. Because that will, as I said, be a big test and almost confirmation point of a lot of people in the north um, were once again uh, told that if they voted um, Tory, they'd get Brexit. Now, of course, the Tory manifesto um, being, you know, very, very light on, uh, on facts. I've said to many people, I'll say this again on this channel, you get a point of um, next year, I highly, highly suggest that there will be a, a new manifesto and that we will see the Tories' true um, ideas and machinations uh, come to light. Until then, they're going to wait because they're still, we are now still technically in the EU. We are still in uh, the transition period and that ends in a couple of months and yet the country is still not prepared for, this tran for that transition to happen. And, you know, we're, we're at the point of where we haven't even got um, regulatory agencies in place and online to actually take over for the ones that we, uh, that we lose when we leave the EU. You know, the chemical industry is, is, is in huge, is in huge worries about um, losing their, um, you know, losing their uh, their regulatory body and they're worried about what the effect of that is going to happen on to um, the UK on their industry because the chemical industry in the UK is actually quite a significant um, thing 
who's that oh well it's the uh, don't worry we'll manage the, the the no that's the that's the that's the bad thing we won't <laughs> um you know this this idea of you know keep calm and, and carry on is is a ludicrous idea no one in a business world or even in a business sense would ever do that ever you know no one would say we're going to join you know our two businesses together and do nothing about how the businesses would work together in that um you know new arrangement you know even from a business standpoint sense brexit doesn't make any sense and it is it's all about a a fantasy that people somehow want to fulfill but it's not going to fulfill all these fantasies and it's one of my continuing worries that this is going to cause a lot of anger a lot of anger because i've said it before already on this stream but i'll say it again the problems of the uk had nothing to do with the eu they were not even there at all and you're like what do you do support the patriotic alternative i have no idea who the patriotic alternative are But I, I highly recommend it's going to be somewhat a nationalistic organisation that have ridiculously, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, the Nazis are turning up. Yeah. <laughs> Time to do what we did in the Second World War and just, you know, drop them out of existence. <laughs> um, you know, this is this is, you know, this is the truth. And it's, you know, many e economists are all turning around and saying, you know, it doesn't make sense for the UK to leave the European Union even now. And it's, you know, we're going to be there and just be like, what on, what on earth happened? And we will be able to, to see the results because we will have, have had 40 years of being in the European Union and all that growth that it gave us versus what it's going to be on the outside. All right, well, I'll tell you what, sorry, but you're banned. Not having that language on this channel. Yeah, if you start spotting that nonsense, I will just uh, just ban you. Uh, you know, I'm not interested in uh, in you know in talking with Nazis. There's no point arguing with you. So we have a very very bizarre, uh, you know, situation of we are going to be in this situation of we have. All that knowledge, all that data of how good the European Union was in. And then, and then, um, you know, we're going to be out of the European Union with these, quote, better trade deals. Of course, as I've said uh, earlier on uh, in the stream, that we don't actually know what is going to be in that Japanese trade deal yet. They're already, the Brexiteers are already trying to uh, big it up. And I can guarantee you guarantee you that uh, that it's not going to uh, not going to work um, you know it's not point not seven percent which is nothing you know look at all the the businesses that we would get from being in the European Union from encouraging them to you know, support and invest because of the European Union. That is a, another thing that the Brexiteers cannot square. How good us being in the European uh, Single Market and Customs Union actually was to this country. And they're going to have to answer for that. You know, when Brexit meets reality, 
reality always wins. And if you, you know, if you uh, can't accept reality, then you're the one with the problem, not the other way around. And, you know, I'm sorry if that's, uh, I'm sorry if you feel that way, but, you know, two plus two will always equal four, not five, which is what the Brexiteers seem to consistently argue for. And they've had, you know, no studies. There's no economist beyond uh, Patrick Minford, who was pretty much ostracized um, during the same... Uh, you know, during the during the Leave campaign, you know, it's it's absolutely insane. And as we said also earlier, what the the rhetoric about quote global Britain doesn't make any sense. You know, when you think about it and you step back and you were to look at it from like another country's point of view, what does that actually mean? The Brexiteers won. Well, what did you actually win? You know, I'll, I'll keep on saying it to you now. You promised, and you over-promised, too much. You promised a lot of people that it would make, leaving the EU would make that better. And I will consistently say, the UK problems were not... Oh... Uh, And the one, ugh. where are all the Nazis coming from? Seriously. There we go. And that's where, uh, that's where we get to of the Brexiteers are gonna have some serious explaining to do. Um, because I tell you now, Brexit, Brexit supporters are very going to quickly realise that their lives haven't been made better, that their lives haven't been improved, and that, you know, that it's not going to be um, any way, shape, form or good for them. Oh dear, more... Um, and yeah, this is what, um, this is what we, we, we've got into now of, you know, if you've promised to make someone's lives better as the Brexiteers did, the Brexit supporters sooner or later are going to turn around and notice, well, my life hasn't been made better. My life hasn't, um, been improved by what were the, the promises of, of, of Brexit, you know, Boris Johnson's, you know, new town initiative um, turned out to be a complete bust. You've got his new, new, amazing quote, new deal that is absolutely awful. It's it's literally not point, not two percent of our GDP, which, when you're talking investment, serious investment in a country, is nothing. You've then got people like um, what is it? Um, the people who build the JCBs, that's it. They've just made the biggest ever investment. This is a British company, by the way. A biggest ever investment they have ever made in uh, in Germany. If Brexit was meant to be so good and improve, you know, and meant to be a really good boon because, quote, we're, we're global Britain now, we can uh, trade with all these, all these other countries. Why on earth is a, an, a Brexit-supporting business as well, making such big investments into Germany and the European Union. You know, you've got to, you've got to answer that question because... Uh, and here's the thing, guys. We just have to let Brexit happen. Brexit is a self 
uh, defeating prophecy. None of its um, promises are good. Oop. None of its, um, you know, deals and ideals are going to come through. Brexit has no policies to talk about what those policies mean. You know, the Tory party are just in it for, you know, short-term wins. You've got a perfect example of what happens with the coronavirus. All the, um, you know, initiatives they've, they've introduced, you know, like the Eat Out to Help Out scheme. What a socialist scheme, by the way. The Tory, imagine that. The Tories implementing socialism to help out the restaurant industry. What, a, what an interesting twist. And here we had people... Only a couple of uh, people saying that socialism doesn't work and that it's uh, ridiculous. But there you go. <laughs> but that's, that's where we are. That's where we are in this bizarre, bizarre argument that is, that is Brexit. And here's the thing, you know, repeat the, the slogan by Ian Hislop made, um, you know, shortly after, you know, the referendum. You know, just because you lose an election or a referendum doesn't stop you be able to make the argument. And that's what a lot of um, Brexit supporters don't like. The fact that people like me and others just haven't stopped talking about the problems that this is going to cause. You know, guys, you, you won. And you didn't win massively. You won by a very, very, very very narrow uh, victory you know three percent is not a massive uh, margin for a win and at no point have you reached out to actually work with um you know the remainers you know you were the ones that turned around and started you know talking down people like me you were the ones that first started throwing around um insults and now that very often, um, you know, you get insults thrown back at you, you don't like it. And you, you, of all people, are far more worried than I am that your precious Brexit, which again, you promised that it was going to improve your lives and make your life better. Doesn't work that way, fortunately. All the economists have been very, very clear since day one. It will not improve the UK's GDP, it will not make people's lives better. What has been damaging people's lives for so long has been Tory austerity. And until, and until you can accept that fact, you cannot have a serious conversation about the UK. You cannot have a serious conversation about Britain and its place in the world. You cannot have any serious political conversation until you admit that first fact that the problems of the UK were never caused by, the U being it, by its being in the European Union. The problems that the UK faced were always, always the Tories and the fact that austerity has destroyed hundreds of thousands of people's lives. It has put more children into poverty. More and more people are in what is called working poverty of where they are in a job but still have to take benefits because, you know, they're on zero hour contracts. Well, guess who was the party that was talking about doing something about zero hour contracts and then at every election said that it would do something and then when they got into power, never did anything about it. Oh, that's right, the Tories. So, <laughs> you know, until you can actually turn around and accept that fact there's there's very little you know trying to talk to you about doing something with or about you know the eu you've got to accept that first premise that the problems of the uk were never caused by the european union they were caused by tory austerity and if you think in any way shape or form that the i the coming ideas for um you know for the Tory party beyond January are going to be um, anything but austerity, think again. Everyone on the front bench of Boris Johnson's government, 
every single member of his party all voted for austerity. And if you don't think that's worrying, then you should be worried because you're not going to get any form of uh, help that you need from the government, where it's been investment for jobs, skills, you name it. It doesn't work like that. And that's where, that's where we are. We're in this bizarrely awful situation where you have working class people who are in absolute desperate times, especially now. Many of them are out of a job. In my area, you know, unemployment has risen, skyrocketed to an unprecedented event. And now, what are all these people going to do? You know, Brexiteers, you promised to make these people's lives better. And yeah, that's the coronavirus doing that. But, as I have also said earlier on, there is a reason why we announced that we are in a recession. Why even though, due to the coronavirus, every other country has, has taken some sort of form of hit from the coronavirus, economically but why have we taken an even bigger economic hit compared to all the other countries around the world why are we the only ones that are in a recession and that is because that brexit is there <laughs> and at the moment not a lot of people are especially journalists but trust me the economists are going to come in and look back on this and say yeah brexit had a part to play in in causing uh, this recession. That's going to be the, the big takeaway. And you know, apparently, again, this was meant to be better for us leaving the EU. Even though we've left and we're still in this transition period of, you know, hasn't improved anyone's lives, hasn't been able to get, you know, people more jobs. Immigration to this country is not going to change, despite um, despite your claims and you know the changing to a, a points-based immigration system. It's not going to change anyone's lives. But there you have it, and you are right, Paul. Barnsley did vote Leave, but it's not going to make anyone's lives better. The people of Barnsley are going to unanimously um, suffer because of Brexit. So many European projects um, have disappeared, especially the one uh, recently that disappeared last year, which was specifically targeted at being able to get, um, you know, <laughs> being able to get... Uh, you know, people into jobs, people to start their own jobs. Oh, hang on. What's that? Oh, oh dear. More Nazis. <sighs> so no, you don't ignore the votes. Because I I've said it before, their problems if you actually talk to people of Barnsley, their problems aren't um, with the EU. Their problems with other government. The fact that there has been a lack of investment. Barnsley is still suffering from the effects of the miners' strike. You know, there is, there have been, um, you know, three to four generations of, of, of families in this town that haven't worked since then. And that's shocking. More people in this town rent than they do um, actually, you know, afford a home. That's because, you know, building of, of, of social housing and housing in general has been left to um, private companies that just haven't built or wanted to build social housing. That's not an EU problem. You know, being able to get a good job in this town 
and you know not be on zero hour contracts is not a problem of the eu that's a government problem that's a uk government problem you know being on um you know benefits and being unable to to feed your family and having to rely on on food banks that's not an eu problem that's a uk government problem and i will say it again there's no point having almost serious political conversations until you guys can admit the problems of this country say it with me the problems of this country were not caused by us being in the european union they were caused because of the uk government and specifically down to tory austerity the eu has been used as a really useful scapegoat over these years and you know what if if any of you guys start using um you know blaming the eu well i'm just gonna laugh because we're, we're out of the eu officially fully on, on january the first how can you blame the eu they've got nothing to do with our country anymore where, where to them they will start treating us like a third country you know the problems and again i keep on saying it the problems of this country were never to do with the eu they were to do with our own government specifically the tory government and the policy of austerity and i will keep on hammering that nail in until you understand it you can name me any problem that this country has and it has nothing to do with the eu it's all to do with uk governments and government policy and specifically within the last decade it has been to do with the tories and austerity and if you think that the tories solution even though uh, rishi shakak has said that people should not um be losing their jobs he will be in implementing um austerity look forward to that in the uh, in the autumn budget because that's what's going to happen Uh, so anyway, oh, well, we've come to uh, the end of our walk today. <sighs> so, thank you for uh, for joining me on my walk today. Um, we're going oh an hour and a half. I thought we'd only an hour, but no. Uh, so thank you very much uh, for joining me today. If you are new to the channel, if you are new, uh, um, please do uh, come join us. Uh, please do subscribe to the channel. Um, you'll see more videos about Brexit. And because, um, you know, if you'd like to help help the channel grow, then please do hit that like button, hit the share button on the videos. It does help out the channel massively. Now... Um, if you do want to support the channel in any other way, um, I do have a Patreon link down below where you can support me on a monthly basis, or I have a, just a single one-off donation link where you can just give me a one-off donation. But anyway, thank you for, for joining me as well. Like I say, I will do um, these walks. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Stop Karaoke, for five, five euros there. Thank you very much. Uh, much appreciated. Like I say, I think that the next thing I'm going to get is a steady cam uh, for, for this. Um, for this so that will that will be going to get a steady cam for for these when i do these walks uh these walks are random i will try and do one on um on saturdays that's when i will try and do them so saturday mornings saturday morning streams you know nice walk you know they're quite nice i might generally try and do one um maybe in between uh sometimes but i i will do them randomly <laughs> i might try and doing uh, another uh, paint and politics stream um uh, better um, but other than that yeah thank you for watching us thank you for supporting uh, us um, and like I say links below like share the videos every little bit helps uh, support support the channel um, so have a wonderful weekend uh, regardless of what you're doing um, please do keep yourself safe out there obviously COVID is still out there please do keep to social distancing rules please do uh, remember to log into a pub and follow their track and trace uh, schemes. 
So thank you all for joining us. Enjoy yourselves. Enjoy your good weekends. And please do remember, if you can't be safe, be sensible. Um, yeah, enjoy your weekends.